Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Patient Convert podcast. I am very excited about our topic today. We are talking to one of our longtime clients and a friend, Dr. David Schwegman out of Atlanta. He runs, he's the medical director of Hyperbaric Physicians of Georgia. So welcome on the show, Dr. Schwegman. Tell us a little bit about kind of yourself, your background, how you got started in hyperbarics, all of that stuff. Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Justin. So happy to be here this morning. If you hear any noise in the background, it's just Hurricane Fred. We've got the tail end of that kind of coming through here. So I apologize if that comes through. But sure. So my background is sort of a circuitous route, which kind of how it works for most people in hyperbaric medicine. But I'm an emergency physician by trade. So I moved to Atlanta and joined faculty at Emory in 2001 and spent the better part of a decade being an academic emergency physician uh, with Emory and at Grady Hospital, which is the big trauma center here in Atlanta. And during that time, I used to be a, a private pilot. So I had developed some expertise in aviation medicine and was practicing, was doing a lot of lectures and talks on aviation medicine, which is medicine, you know, at 30,000 feet in the air. And uh, after about a decade of emergency medicine, my wife came to me with a photo album and I look through it and she's like, do you notice you're not in any of the photos? And she's like, look, you, you, you really got to subspecialize and do something that has a better, better life for a family. And so we wanted to grow our family at the time. And that's when I uh, made the leap to subspecialize in hyperbaric medicine, which was just really a natural offshoot for me because basically instead of being medicine at 30,000 feet, it was medicine at 45 feet below. So it was really a, just an opposite learning curve. It was really an easy transition for me. And, and with hyperbaric medicine comes wound care. And well, gosh, I'd been working at Grady for the last 10 years. So that's no problem. So it was really just sort of a, a natural fit for me. Excellent. Tell us a little about, because most of the listeners, especially the physicians are going to be familiar, um, at least at some level with hyperbarics, but mm -hmm. making that change from emergency medicine, working for a large hospital, and then going mm -hmm. into private practice with something that has been historically very hospital attached when you think about hyperbarics. Talk a little bit about that journey kind of early on and it'll lead to kind of our discussion about how marketing and the patient journey has changed. But what did that look like early on during the transition and educating physicians on um, use cases for hyperbarics and, and growing to what has now become one of the largest independent hyperbarics organizations in the, in the Southeast? I mean, actually, you know, it wasn't the medicine so much that was the challenge to learn. It was really the business practices, you know, the coding and the billing and the insurance pieces and the contracts for insurance and all of those pieces that, you know, go into running a private practice that really aren't involved in, in you know, hospital-based medicine, the, the marketing piece and, you know, learning how to, to speak to physicians, not just about their cases, but how to educate them. You know, most physicians don't really know anything about hyperbaric medicine. It's not taught in 85% of medical schools and residencies. So basically nine out of 10 physicians really have no experience with hyperbaric medicine. And if they do, it's usually just something peripheral. So, you know, there were lots of different components to, you know, making that transition. And again, the, learning the medicine wasn't the hard part. It was actually putting all of those pieces together so that you can run a successful practice and, you know, doing so in a manner that always puts patient care first. So, you know, when it comes to hyperbarics, you know, most of what people know is what they see on the news and, and things like that, which is people that are misusing or abusing the technology. And so, you know, it's oftentimes looked at with a critical eye, which is totally fine by me because in our practice, we practice evidence-based medicine. Uh, most of us are emergency physicians and evidence-based medicine is really, really important. So going out and marketing to physicians, you know, we, we really took the articles with us and it's quite the journey, you know, back when we started doing this, you know, it was all feet on the street. So it was, you know, me and my white coat meeting with physician after physician after physician, handing article after article after article, and, you know, trying to help educate 
my colleagues about what hyperbaric medicine is, what it does, and how truly effective and even life-altering it can be. So yeah, that was really, I would say, the hardest transition from being a hospital-based emergency, especially academic emergency physician, into a you know private practice, you know, sort of entrepreneurial role. That's interesting. That's such a narrative, like by my wife Kelly, who co-hosts this, and and everybody who listens knows, knows Kelly. Obviously, lives in the world of physician referral development, physician liaison, and we've heard that story. I'd say is the most common time and again, especially whether it's career transition or starting something early on, like what you've done is versus where you are now. It's always the story of, well, early on I was out, like I could go out in my white coat and I could shake hands and build relationships. And then that obviously becomes unsustainable at some point, like where you are at in your career now. I mean, you just it's not feasible to go out there and, and continue to shake hands. So it's like well-intended early on and then practice and clinics and the life of running a, a practice from a business and a patient health standpoint can get in the way. It's just not a good use of time. I mean, particularly for what we do, it's really, we, it's unusual because I hate to say it, we're kind of like a Roach Motel in that patients come in and so we need referrals in, but because of the nature of what we do, we don't have a lot of referrals back out. And that's what's sort of different about what we do is that most physicians, you know, it's kind of like, hey, nice to meet you. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. Yep. Mm-hmm. And with hyperbarics, it's just not that way. We don't have a lot in terms of offering patient referrals back that we do. But that added a, a layer of complexity where, you know, since they're the physicians weren't seeing this sort of direct benefit of referring to us. They weren't seeing referrals back. It made it difficult because you were, you know, you had to constantly, you know, say, Hey, look, we're here. Remember, and we're doing such a good job for your patients and we're relying a little bit on their uh, altruism. So it's very challenging in that regard and very labor intensive. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense because yeah, when you, there's always that from a story standpoint in terms of like physician liaisons or whoever's building the, that referral is, well, get your patients back. You'll get your notes back. Like outside of notes, there's not as much on y'all's end, which definitely makes it more of a naturally one-sided affair. Like you mentioned, I loved your take. Cause when we talk to physicians, I always like to hear kind of what they see, because obviously we, we talk a lot about it, but you're on the front line. So just be taking care of the patients when it comes to over the last several years, especially, I mean, COVID in the last year and a half, have you seen a change in the kind of how patients are finding you in terms of the patient journey? Obviously there's still the referral component, but are you seeing kind of a change in the weather, so to speak, as far as patients being in tune with their healthcare and being able to kind of make a lot, some of their own decisions in terms of going, being able to market directly to them and those kind of things? What was what your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's changed dramatically, but you know, I'm not sure if the landscape changed or if we just actually stopped being dinosaurs. You know, so you know, when we reached out to you guys, Justin, we needed help. We recognized the the limits of what we were able to do, and we recognized that you know, none of us in our practice are social media experts and internet experts, and we realized that that's really where the landscape was going, even before COVID. But, you know, I mean, obviously, since COVID started, you can't get into doctor's offices, nor do I really want to go into doctor's yeah. office. I don't want to shake hands all day long and they don't want to they don't want to shake hands with me. You know, we try to keep our respectful distance so that we're not propagating this pandemic. So, you know, I think we, we all we had to evolve. And so I'm not sure if the landscape changed so much or if it was actually just the fact that we tapped the resources that you guys offer that has been there all along. So obviously for us, it was a dramatic shift. I I don't know how much of that is market forces and COVID, or if it's us again, just reaching out and using the leverage that you guys are able to provide us that we just simply weren't using before. But for us, of course, it's been a huge change for sure. I think, and that's interesting because it there, ha- there seems to be healthcare traditionally always has, I'd say, a two to five year lag in adoption of, say, like real estate or f- the finance space, what they're adopting in terms of, of marketing or technology, whatever it may be. There always seems to be a pretty consistent lag in technology adoption 
mm-hmm. which seems to start taking hold. COVID kind of forced it upon everybody's landscape. But what's even more interesting is y'all were really what I consider very early adopters in terms of using digital marketing to reach and educate both patients and physicians, because traditionally, whether we're very familiar with a subspecialty or not, in terms of the agency, there's always a due diligence process to walk through in terms of essentially looking at what your geographical competitors are doing. What landscape have they carved out? How active are they on social media? How are they going about attracting patients through paid ads and stuff? And there really is no market or model in terms of marketing hyperbarics that's out there outside of maybe there's a, a practice in New York that that does a good job, but there's not many else in the, in the entire United States to go out and even find a website to look at. So y'all are really kind of groundbreaking in terms of turning it on its head and saying, we're built on physician referrals, but we got to be able to start educating patients and going direct to patients. Yeah, well, I wish I could take credit for that. I mean, basically, you know, to be honest with you, that's actually you. <laughs> you know, we kind of dropped our practice in your lap and said, okay, what do you, what can you do for us? And so really, I think the ideas of, you know, where we are from a digital marketing perspective, I don't think any of them really came from us. We, we were just like, hey, we know we need to get into this space. What do you think? And so it's actually, you know, the credit all really goes to you, Justin for, you know, getting us to the position that we are, you know, right now. So I wish I could take credit for that. Well, and it's such a, it's such a team effort though, like being able to have direct access to you, for instance, and really talk. It's such a back and forth. And, you know, that, that's really, it's been a real eye opener for me because you're asking questions to me that I would have never thought of, you know, as a physician or even in business, you know, you're asking me things that, my, I would have never thought of. I mean, literally, if I'd lived to be a thousand years old, I don't think I would think of. I mean, they're important and they're and they're very relevant. And you know, so it really has been a collaborative effort. And obviously, I think what you've been able to do for us, you know, is predicated on the fact that we're sort of an open book, handing you all the information that we have. But again, you know, without you know help and guidance, you know, we, I don't think we would be anywhere close to where we are right now from a digital marketing perspective. Well, I appreciate that. And it's been, it's something that we talk a lot to and whether it's content or webinars. And I think one of the reasons why we've had so much success partnering together is you and your team having the access, like you just mentioned, to be able to not only talk openly about ideas, but especially in a, a space that requires so much education, it is not a new space, but a space that is not well known in terms of the patient seeking information and education and being able to really sit down and and lay out what that journey looks like what the questions the patients are asking so something can be built around that that can really supply everything that the patient needs and not only drive patients through the door but hopefully improve on the patient care journey and take some burden off of of you guys inside of the office so you're not answering the same 15 questions every single time hopefully people can find those resources online Absolutely. I mean, the the time that we spend answering the question over and over and over again is, you know, has a huge opportunity cost and that's not where we want to be spending our time. So anytime that patients can become more well-informed, I mean, even before their first, you know, initial consult, you know, where we would, you know, we give them an hour of time. And, you know, what we're finding is that most patients now are actually, they're doing their homework. And so the barrage of questions that used to be there they're not there as frequently. And that frees up our time. I mean, if we don't have to keep repeating the same thing day in and day out, that's a huge win for us. And, you know, will potentially allow us to help more people and that, you know, right now there's a waiting list to get in and see us or, you know, a significant time delay. And if we're able to be more efficient by not having to spend quite as much time educating patients, you know, then we can actually help more people each day. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. But change gears a little bit. I wanted to talk to, and this is more about actually patient point of care and what hyperbarics can do, but y'all recently, which is something obviously as the marketer in me that I absolutely loved, were part of a, a documentary around the PTSD universe and how hyperbarics can can really 
has made tremendous strides in helping veterans, especially with the Fayetteville location that y'all have, which is near Fort Bragg. I'd love to talk a little bit just straight to that and what you're seeing in terms of the PTSD side. And just to learn a little bit more about kind of putting that documentary together, because it really is, I mean, such an incredibly valuable piece of marketing, but the story is incredibly powerful as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's this whole sort of bucket of post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, post-concussive syndrome, you know, they all sort of are in this sort of melting pot where, you know, we're finding that hyperbaric therapy is, you know, potentially truly life-changing for these people. And it's obviously, it's been our honor to be able to help take care of the veterans. I mean, the people that are willing to put their lives on the line for us, you know, the fact that we can give back a little bit to them has been huge. But to see, like, for instance, we had, you know, a veteran that was driving almost 100 miles to come and see us every day. And initially, he had to be driven up. They literally had to hold his hand to get him so that he could navigate to even find our hyperbaric chamber. Wow. By the end of it, he was riding his motorcycle. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and, you know, he came in and would get himself dressed. And, you know, and at the end, he saluted us. And it was, it was an awesome feeling to be able to, you know, impact somebody's life that dramatically. It was really awesome, but it's really been a blessing for us. We really hope that, you know, for people that are struggling with um, post-concussion, post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, uh, or traumatic brain injury that they investigate and at least look wherever they are, their local hyperbaric provider as a potential solution to help them, you know, recover. That's amazing. That's why I wanted to to bring it up is what's going on there and ha- how many veterans that y'all have been able to help is truly remarkable and something that's really exciting as you're able to help more and more and more veterans. And I'm excited to help be a part of the kind of patient story journey there too. And I think that's what a lot of people miss out on and, and that y'all are able to to do as you participated in that documentary. But there's so many patients out there that like the veteran that you talked about that you just talked about in their story that are willing to become ambassadors and kind of tell their story from their point of view about the experience. I'm excited about collecting that because those are going to be such powerful stories. Like you just mentioned. I agree. Uh, And, you know, I mean, I love watching those stories myself for various other things, you know, seeing people's triumphant recovery is it's, it's awesome. And, you know, hyperbaric therapy, I think is one of those things that for a lot of people, it, we've all experienced this in life where you say to yourself, you know, you learned something that was important and you're like, how did I not know this until now? How am I just hearing about this now? And that if I had a dollar for every patient that came to me and said, why didn't I know about this before? Why didn't my doctor know about it? Or I wouldn't need to practice anymore. So the fact that we can get the word out and using the, you know, digital marketing space to be able to do that, it's really a, a powerful tool. Absolutely. But tell us before we wrap up a little too, because y'all have kind of a whole other area of your business that you help a lot of physicians kind of implement a model similar to y'all. We call it consulting or whatever you want to call, but really all of the journey that you've been talking about today and that you mentioned early on about learning the business side, learning the credentialing, learning what how to lower your supply costs, all of that stuff. Y'all can y'all are out there helping implement hyperbarics facilities all over the country. So talk a little bit about that too for the listeners. Sure. And you know, you know, the practice of hyperbaric medicine again, it's so unique. And you know, over the last 30 years, we've developed expertise in it. And our expertise comes a lot from quite honestly, stepping in it, you know, and <laughs> that's, making that's mistakes, kind of expertise, honestly. you know, and fumbling our way through it to the point that we've made every mistake. We now know where all of the pitfalls and, you know, the hangups are, and we can help practices go from the ground up without making any of those mistakes, whether it comes from planning a center to build out to where you put your chambers or where you put your oxygen tanks to the workflow of the physical layout to contracts for insurance to your marketing piece to staffing to billing collections they're all really unique and i know that there's a lot of companies out there that are sort of large you know practice management companies 
And they, those are great for internal medicine and, you know, primary care and general surgery and things that, you know, that there's a lot of, but our practice is just so unique. And there's so few of us that using those services, it's not really helpful. They don't really understand the ins and outs yep. of what we do. And so obviously there's a, a great need for more office-based hyperbaric medicine practices. It's the, it's the future of hyperbaric medicine, honestly. And we don't want businesses to fail before they can get off the ground. And that's really our, our goal is to help, you know, practices that are in that space or thinking about that space really get there with a sense of comfort and know that they're not fumbling in the dark and just sort of making those same mistakes that we did. You know, we were fortunate that we may had enough wins to overcome our mistakes, Mm -hmm. but man, would we look a lot different right now if we had had the help that we're able to give to others? Yeah, for sure. sure. And and that's, what's fantastic about kind of the the program that y'all offer is it's almost, while it is consulting, it's kind of a mentorship too, in terms of we can help you avoid a lot of the mistakes that we have learned over the years, uh, which hits home for me too, because I started out at, in my mid twenties starting the business. And I, I feel the same exact way as like, Oh, if I had known all those hurdles, I'd be in a totally different position today. But I think that there's it also wouldn't be the same for you, the same leader, the same medical director, have the knowledge that you had if you didn't learn, learn those lessons along the way too. That's true. Uh, you know, and, you know, to be honest with you, I think in general, we all have a tendency or most of us have a tendency to say, well, why spend that money? Why mm-hmm. should I spend the money on a consultant or an expert to help me do this? I, I can do this myself and save a bunch of money. And to be perfectly honest with you, Justin, you know, we held hands for a long time before I committed to, you know, using Intrepi for our digital marketing. I was like, why? I can, we can build a website for a hundred dollars why would I do this? And, you know, it's only now after the fact of having used your services where I went from, you know, that feeling of, well, why should I pay somebody to do this? This doesn't make sense to, this is absolutely critical and an invaluable piece of what we do. And I can't imagine not having it. It's, you know, it's one of those 180 degree turnarounds because, you know, again, what we want to do is we want to offer value to people. We want to make it so that we ensure their profitability and we ensure their success. And that's, that's exactly what we gotten from you guys, where it hasn't, we haven't felt like you guys are, you know, are taking from us. You guys are giving a lot more than what you take back. And that's how we've been, you know, successful in growing our business. I, I really appreciate that. That, that means a lot. I and mean, it's been such a fun journey over several years now, being a client and watching y'all grow and be able to work alongside of you. And I'd say to that point that you mentioned, it's definitely one of the most common things, but I can't remember exactly how the quote goes, but. Well, yeah, my quote is, you know, I went from how can I afford to do this to now it's like, how can I afford to not do this? Yeah. And that's the interesting thing, the the way to look at it. And you got to be really careful to, I don't know the best way to describe it, if you get too cheap on whether whatever it is, if it's hiring billing experts, consulting experts, marketing experts, there's a fine line there between a good and bad decision. And everybody learns it as an entrepreneur, just like we were talking about. But sometimes investing in the the knowledge and the experience and all of that is worth its weight in gold because hiring on the other end and living in the digital marketing world, unfortunately, we see it day in and day out. And it's how the agency world has developed a really bad name for itself of way over promising or using way fancy words and completely under delivering or stealing. And uh, that's what you have to be careful on the other side too, is getting burned 99% of the time is a whole lot more costly than than kind of making the right investments um, early on with whatever it is and whatever expertise that you're going out and, and bringing in houses. That's always something to to keep in mind is the investment, if it's done the right way, always offsets the the bad investment that may have saved money, but caused a lot of issues in the long run. Absolutely. hundred percent agree. Well, David, thank you so much again for coming on and, and sharing a little bit about your journey, about hyperbarics in particular, and being such an amazing client for us over the years and supporting us the way that you have. 
Well, tell us before we sign off how the listeners can get connected with you and obviously learn more specifically about the practice, the consulting, all of that kind of stuff as well. And we'll have all of this in the show notes too. Yeah, sure. The easiest way is our website, which is www.hbo. M-D-G-A, so H-B-O for hyperbaric oxygen, M-D for physician, G-A for Georgia.com. So www.hbomdga.com. And there's a link there for physicians where they can find my cell phone number and email. So you can call me, text me, you know, or send me an email from the website. Excellent. Again, we'll have that up in the show notes. And thank you again, David, for uh, coming on and joining us and taking some time out of your busy schedule. It was really great having you on. Justin, thanks a lot for thinking of me. Thank you for listening to today's latest episode of the Patient Convert Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and review on your favorite podcast platform. We are on Apple, iTunes, Google, Stitcher, and Spotify, or you can sign up to receive the latest episode via email. Just check it out on my agency website or my personal website. And if you are looking for more amazing healthcare marketing information or just to engage, check us out at entropy.com. And for any of my amazing physician liaisons out there interested in growing their physician referrals or learning the strategies that it takes to build highly engaged physician referral networks. Check out my website, kellynott.com, where I have free webinars, free downloads, and of course, my online physician liaison training course, Physician Liaison University. And as always, I'm a huge believer in connecting, engaging, and supporting one another. And the best way we can do that is networking. And I always, always connect with you guys on social media. And one of my biggest social media platforms is LinkedIn. So feel free to connect with me there on LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter at Kelly Knott. And thank you guys again for listening to the Patient Convert Podcast with your host, Kelly Knott.